Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. This series of videos is based on the advanced information released by the exam boards ready for the 2022 GCSE exam papers. This advanced information gives detailed information about what will be appearing on each of the three papers and will help you focus your revision on the topics that will definitely be coming up. It requires a bit of interpretation and knowledge of the syllabus. So in these videos, I'll be summarising this information for you, telling you exactly what topics you need to be revising for each paper. I'll also be drawing on my experience of previous papers to give you my best guess for the type of questions you might expect. I think it'll be well worth your time watching it all the way through. If you're not yet subscribed, why not do that now and hit the bell so you'll be notified when these and other resources are uploaded. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do give it a like. This really helps me out. Also, why not share the video with your teacher and your friends, as I'm sure they will also find it useful. Let's get into it. Just a reminder of how to use this video. Watch the video through first. I'm going to go run through every topic that's going to come up on the paper. Once I've done that, below the video, you'll find a whole bunch of links to example questions matching up with those topics. So these are my best guess of the type of question that, that is going to come up. Very worthwhile going through each of those. Finally, I've included quite a big playlist of topics that I've identified with lots of extra questions. These to give you a bit more extra practice of those topics. So if you're struggling on a particular one, then definitely worth going, jumping through that and reviewing that material. OK, so let's get let's get cracking on this then. So the advanced information is broken down into the six mathematical strands, number, ratio, algebra, geometry, probability and statistics. And I'm going to go through each one and identify the topics and talk a little bit about them. First up, we've got the number strand. And the first thing listed here is four operations. So just make sure you know how to do long multiplication and division, you know, and you can add numbers together. Next, negative numbers. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, positive and negative numbers. Uh, not getting confused between the two sets of rules for those. Uh, then we've got order of operations, which is bid mass, brackets, indices, division, uh, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So just knowing your order of operations. Next, we've got estimation and students often lose marks on this one. Normally because there's like a really kind of complex looking calculation and above it, it says the word estimate and students don't read that word and they just think they need to do the complicated sum that's underneath. Uh, so just make sure you do read the blurb above the, the questions because there's, there's normally information there that's really important. If you are asked to estimate, then remember that you have to round each number to one significant figure first and then do the calculation, okay? Fraction arithmetic, can you add, subtract, multiply and divide fractions and mixed numbers? This one is uh, on the crossover, so probably it's going to be a harder fraction question here. So expect something with mixed numbers, perhaps, or some harder arithmetic. Next, we've got fraction of a number. That is, you know, saying like what's three quarters of, of 20. So remember to divide by the number on the bottom and times by the number on the top. Uh, then we've got laws of indices. So when you've got two numbers with the same base, when you multiply them, you add the indices. When you uh, divide them, you subtract the indices. And there's also one where you need to take a number with a power and raise it to another power, in which case you have to multiply the, the powers together. Uh, standard form, conversion and calculation. So taking a, a larger or small number and rewriting it in standard form and then be able to do some calculations on those numbers. So if you've got two numbers in, ca uh, in standard form, can you multiply them together? Can you divide them? Can you add them? Okay. Inequality notation. So uh, if I give you uh, two values, can you put the right inequality sign between them? And systematic listing. So that, you know, if, so if I had two dice, a red dice and a green dice, could you list all the different outcomes in a systematic way so you didn't miss any out? So they tend to be that, you know, you have to avoid missing one. That's why you get marked down uh, and not and not repeating yourself. OK, moving on to ratio conversions length. So can you convert centimeters into meters and uh, centimeters into millimeters or maybe uh, centimeters to inches? Percentage of an amount. So if can you find 10 percent of an amount, 20 percent of an amount, 50 percent of an amount? amount as a percentage. So if you got, for instance, 15 out of 20 in a test, could you rewrite that as a percentage? Fraction less than one. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that. Fraction less than one. 
I, I don't really know what that means, but you know, as long as you know how, how to deal with all your fractions and know all your fraction operations, I'm sure you'll be fine. Ratio in simplest form. Uh, so, you know, can you cancel down a ratio? Ratios cancel down fairly similarly as, um, as fractions do. So if you can, you know, if you can cancel down nine twelfths as a fraction uh, into three quarters, you can do the same thing with a, with a ratio. Uh, so nine to nine to twelve would cancel down into three to four, just the same way. Ratio to fraction. Can you convert a ratio into a fraction? Remember, when you look at a ratio, you're comparing what you've got with what you don't have, and with a fraction, you're comparing what you've got with everything. So generally, to convert a ratio to a fraction, all you've got to do is add the two parts of the ratio together, and that's going to be your denominator. Cost problem. So, you know, one of those problems, maybe it's like a Best Buy thing or uh, working out which, which is the cheapest way of, of purchasing something if there are several options. Density. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. Given two of those things, you should be able to work out the third thing. Moving on to algebra. And first up, we've got linear equations. So can you solve a linear equation with unknowns on one or both sides? You need to rearrange, don't you? So you have to get x by itself, and then and then you'll find your answer. Uh, recognizing graphs. Do you know the difference between a linear graph and a quadratic uh, and a cubic? Could you identify them on uh, if I gave you a, a kind of a graph? Would you know? Would you recognize which which was which? Can you plot graphs? Uh, now it mentions linear graphs here, so I think it's going to be plotting a linear graph rather than a quadratic. Uh, so you, but easiest way is to create a table of values, isn't it? And then sub your x values into the equation one after the other until you you found all the y values, and then you can plot those points on the graph. Okay. Next up, we've got linear graph, which is what I was talking about. I think you're going to have to draw one from its equation. Well, I think we might have to draw two, actually, because it says intersection of lines. So perhaps there was one already on the diagram, and you have to draw a second one on it, and then look for the point where the two lines cross. So you'd have to find the point where they intersect and read off the coordinates. So read down to the x-axis and across to the y-axis, and write that coordinate down. Interpreting graphs, you might have to find intercepts, so where they cross through the y-axis or the x-axis, or answer other questions based on looking at the graph. Formula reasoning, these tend to be like, uh, you know, if, if you increase one of the values, what's going to happen with your formula? Is it going to get bigger or smaller? Uh, those sorts of questions. And sequence rule to find a term. With these questions, you've been given a, a specific way of generating a term of a sequence. You'll have to go away and do it. So whatever it says, it might say take the last term and double it and, and take away three or something like that. You just have to kind of follow the rule until you've got as many terms as, as they're asking you to find. Next up, we've got geometry, naming circle parts. So you'll be given a picture of a circle and a bit on it, and you'll have to say, ah, that is the radius, or, oh, that's a, that's a chord, or that's an arc, or a segment, or a sector. So just make sure you know all those different name parts for your circles. Types of triangle. Uh, you've got scaling triangles where all the sides are different and all the angles are different. You've got isosceles triangles where the base angles are equal and two sides are equal, aren't they? And then you've got equilateral triangles where um, all three angles are equal and they're going to be equal to 60 and all the sides are the same. So knowing about those and, and knowing about their properties would be very useful for this exam. Translation. So uh, that's a particular sort of transformation where you pick up something up and move it. You might just have to, you might be told to go, you know, three units along and four up, or you might be given it as a vector. I suspect the first one because they haven't mentioned vectors anywhere in, in, the, in the topics here. Okay. How to find the perimeter, which is the distance around the edge of the shape. You just kind of have to add all the different sides together, don't you? And then next up, we've got sector of a circle. Now, I've got a sneaky suspicion that those two are going to go together so the question is going to be finding the perimeter of a sector um, so to do that you need to find the the arc length don't you so you take the angle at the center divide it by 360 times it by the circumference of a circle formula it's pi times diameter or 2 pi r and that will give you the arc section now to find the perimeter of a, a sector you then need to add the two uh, radius is onto it, don't you? Okay, now I'll put an example in, in the questions below so you can try one of those out. Angles in a triangle, knowing that they add up to 180, plus, of course, all your special sorts of triangles that were mentioned earlier. So, you know, knowing base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal, and so if you 
if you were given one, how would you find all the others? Or if you were given the angles at the tip of an isosceles triangle, could you find the base angles? And then finally, construction region. Uh, so this is where you're given perpendicular bisectors or angle bisectors or circles to draw and they kind of divide your diagram up into different areas and you'll have to work out which is the area that they're talking about. Okay, I've linked to one below. Moving on to probability and we've got a probability problem. Okay, not a lot of information there. So hopefully it's just a fairly basic probability question. And then we've got Venn diagram. Now this is actually also mentioned in the higher tier paper. So it could be what we call a crossover question, so like a grade four, grade five question. So expect it to be quite a tough Venn diagram question. Okay, make sure you've been through all the Venn diagram questions that you can. I've got I've got a whole video just on Venn diagrams linked in the playlist accompanying this video. If I were you, I'd go through all of those. Finally, we've got statistics and first up is two-way tables. So that's usually where you've got two different types of things like boy, girls and um, and maybe the subjects they do and, uh, and you kind of arrange it in two different directions. So generally these questions you have to kind of fill them in first and they might be partially filled in. You have to work out the rest of the numbers and then you might, be, might need to form some percentages from the two-way table, perhaps some fractions or even a probability. Okay. Averages problem, so it could be which average is the best average to use, or it might be, you know, find a mode or find a median, one of those. And finally, I've got an outlier question. Uh, so the, these might be linked to the average problem uh, above. Sometimes they might give you a list of numbers and say which is the best average to use. And if one of the values is like really different from the others, so like you, you had like four, four, five, six, seven, a hundred, then one of them is clearly an outlier and, and that means that the mean is not appropriate. You'd be better off using the, the median or a mode if, if a mode exists. Okay, so just, just bear that in mind. I've got an example question like that below. Okay, and that's it. So a quick, quick zip through all the different topics. Uh, don't forget to go through the questions below. That's a really important bit. Me yabbering on is one thing, but you actually see in an example of the, th of the type of question I think is going to come up. That's going to be the valuable thing. If you discover a, a topic that you do need extra help on, don't forget to look through the playlist of topics that are coming up on this paper. So I've made a playlist for each paper. It's got all the topics on there that uh, I think are going to come up. Just pick out the ones that you that you feel like you need to do extra practice on. OK. Don't forget that the best revision for these exams is to go through all the past papers from previous years. The advanced information really doesn't change that. Here's a link to all the past paper walkthroughs I've done. Uh, there, there's a link below each video where you can download the paper. If you work through all of those before your final exams, there will be really few surprises for you on the day. Good luck and see you on the next video.